Good morning. This is May 27th, 2011. It's Friday, and it's approximately 6:22 on the West Coast in California. The time has something to do with what's called the Patriot Act that came off of the filibuster. The filibuster goes in automatically as pocket veto because it came from the consequences the legislative branch. Consequences means that it wasn't agreed upon before it went to vote. They filibustered it into a party battle over the act itself because they were breaking the act up. Legislative can't break the act up because then we get into what's called the bill of attainer and ex post facto. So it goes as a pocket veto and it goes out into law enforcement and areas of government as a fragmented act, which is basically becomes unenforceable even though it's passed. It doesn't mean that it's going to be signed by myself in the pocket. A pocket means they can take and scratch a signature on it while they're holding it in a pocket. I'm not going to uh, go into the pocket veto uh, philosophy of the executive branch on how bills are held and, and stopped because of consequences that come out of the legislation. You have a legislator from Kentucky that battles in what's called a filibuster. That means unlimited talking on the floor of the legislative branch in order to stop a movement of a bill because it's being broke. The act is being broke out, and they're trying to regain something from the act out of the filibuster. And that can't be done, and so the executive branch always does what's called a pocket veto on it, or they'll hold it in a pocket, and they, they won't say veto, they'll just hold it there. Uh, Barack Obama used what's called a electronic signature in another country. That's the same as a pocket scratch. He scratched it, just like if you're playing pool, you do a scratch shot, you're going to you're gonna knock the you're going to knock one ball in, and then you'll knock the, the cue or white ball in to scratch out. Because you don't want to deal with it. It's, been, it's an act that's broken apart. Uh, the act is based on the consequences. Consequences of Congress in six years. Uh, they have four-year limit on it. That means the motion goes two-thirds on the votes on it, and you can't really get that in Congress right now because it's it's not a two-thirds Congress. It's barely a democracy con Congress of majority. So so anything comes out is either vetoed, pocket vetoed, or a scratch, or you just you just leave it where it's at and and leave it on the shelf. As far as as far as the Patriot Act is overall, it, it's a good act except the tapping part. They put limits on it because that's that's a consequence automatically when you tap without a warrant. So they limit you to the four years and the two thirds and and such and such that has been done uh, over the over the years that we've been under the Patriot Act. And, uh, well, it's up. It's up today, so we got to vote on it. it. It's not as simple as that. It sounds simple when you listen to it on the news media. But the the truth of the matter is, if you want to, if you want to tap somebody, you can go to a judge and and get a warrant to tap. There's, there's a big parameters of different laws to tap on. You can do a stakeout and, and, ob and observe somebody that is under suspicion, and then you can tap that person if, you, if there's probable cause believing that there's some kind of criminal conduct that may come forward, but you can't restrict somebody from uh, their freedom of the Fourth Amendment. The freedom of the Fourth Amendment is they have rights in their papers and their persons. Uh, you can tap that only with judicial warrants of uh, wiretaps and uh, taps of their mail, etc. So, 
So what, what the pre-administration does and what the United States does is basically exactly what the Fourth Amendment says. Uh, involving any kind of tax, we're going to do exactly what it says. We'll go get a warrant. Other than that, there's not much else we can do because what, what came out of the legislative branch of the Patriot Act is dead. It's dead. It's past the legislative branch, but we have a dead file in the executive branch, and it's dead. Uh, the electronic signature jurisdiction is in the United States. It's not the intent of Congress on e-government act to have electronic signature internationally. The first one to use the electronic signature was former President Clinton when he signed the Antiquities Act and he, he signed it. It was used strictly it was used strictly in the United States jurisdiction. There's no jurisdiction in England or Britain for any president to sign any kind of bill or act. So that's the extent of the news. The news is wrong again on how they perceive what is being given to them from the government. Uh, before they broadcast, they should be a little more careful on how they're reading something or they're going to find, them in, find themselves in a liability suit of definition of character of the United States of America. Well... That's about all that the pre-administration has today on the, the current area of the Patriot Act. Uh, simply put, if law enforcement wants to tap someone, they can go to a judge and get a warrant. Or sign, sign an affidavit and give it to the district attorney and let the district attorney go to the judge and get a warrant. That's the extent of our wiretaps, and that's the way it's been ever since we've had telephones. And... That's about it. It's a nice day today. It's it's uh, fair in, in the West Coast, so it looks like the the troughing and the deep digging is is slackening with westerlies from the west from the West Coast, and that's good for the Midwest. But it's not very good for the upper rocky areas of the Mississippi because there'll be melting of the snowpack, and that may increase floods again. So. Make sure, make sure you watch, watch your your news channels and where you live, which might affect you in the in the coming coming days and months. Thank you. This has been Guy Ralph Perea, Senior, President of the United States.